This is A Thousand Miles, Chapter 5, To the River. Three weeks passed at the fort. Every new day, groups of Native Americans were brought within the walls. We'll leave soon, Deucey told Emmy as they sat huddled in the shade. Where? To Chattanooga is what some of the soldiers say. We're to march to Chattanooga and get on a barge to the west. From there, we travel the rivers to Indian Territory. Do you think they have houses there for us in Indian Territory? Schools? I miss school, Amy sighed. I doubt it. They wouldn't even spare old boots for you. Don't not count on a house. Do stu, Emmy, the boy's voice called. Henry Alden smiled and waved at them. What do you want? Deustu asked. Your father rounded us up like we were no better than cattle. Deustu practically spit the words at Henry. My father is doing his job. He's following his orders. He's a coward. He's doing his job. You would do the same. Never. I would not betray my friends. I have a backbone. Your father does not. Deustu, stop, please. Why? Why should I? I will only stop if you stop defending your two-faced father. Stop, because I'm coming along with you to Indian Territory. So, to beat us and humiliate us too? No, to help. No one asked for your help. My minister at the church did. He told me what happened to your family. We don't need your pity. Dustu, not everyone supports this removal. Many people, white people even, are still arguing and fighting against it. What's your point, Henry? My point is that I'm sorry. Sorry that my father is part of the militia and that he had to do this. Sorry that your land and your home were taken away. Again, pity. Shut up, Henry. Your pity is making me sick. My minister is here. He brought other members of our congregation, not just me. We're going to help you on this journey. We've been, you've been enough help already. So is your father. Go away. Do stoop, we've brought supplies, medicine, blankets. The government won't give you any help, but the churches will. At the mention of blankets, Emmy's eyes lit up. Can I have a blanket, Henry? The ground is rocky and hard to sleep on at night. Of course, Pastor Smith has wagons full just outside the fort. I'll fetch from some for your family. How many do you need? One, Deuce interrupted. We need just one for Emmy. Henry returned a few moments later. His arms were loaded with thick, clean calico blankets. Here are five for your family. He passed the blankets to Emmy. Take them to your mother for safekeeping. Thank you, Henry. Emmy smiled and rushed away to deliver the blankets to Mama. Are those blankets to atone for your father's sins? Deustu said. Deustu, nothing can write what they did to your family. Nothing. Nothing ever will. But as a friend, let me be there to help you where I can. Henry held out his hand to Deustu. Friends again? Will you trust me? Deustu thought back on what had happened the past three weeks. Soldiers arresting his parents, the looters stealing from their home, walking for miles, surviving on little food and water, living in the fort. I shouldn't trust any white person, Deustu thought. So he lied to Henry. Yes, friends. But he did not shake Henry's outstretched hand. Captain Alden marched up to Henry and Deustu. His militia uniform looked freshly laundered. Deustu looked down at his own sweat-soaked, dirt-crusted clothes. It doesn't matter what I wear or how terrible I look, Deustu thought. It matters what's in my heart. Henry, son, Pastor Smith needs you. Yes, sir, Henry answered. Boy, if you are serving as a missionary on this journey, then you better get to work. No chit-chatting with the Indians. Henry offered a weak smile in Deustu's direction. The boy can't think for himself, Deustu thought. He's a weakling. Boy, Captain Alden turned to Deustu. We marched to Chattanooga in the morning. Tell your family to prepare. My name is Deustu Rivers, Captain Alden. You know that. Just follow orders, boy, and your family will do fine. Don't talk back. Captain Alden spun around and strode back to the barracks. Deustu found his parents sitting inside the small white tent. The soldiers had issued a tent to each Indian family. Rows of white tents filled the fort. Papa and Mama sat stitching rags together with needle and thread. Emmy slept soundly on her blanket. What are you doing? Deustu asked his parents. Making bandages and handkerchiefs, his mother answered. Why? Your father heard they're going to march us to Chattanooga. It's a long walk. We don't expect the soldiers to take care of any of us if we get sick or injured. Deustu nodded. I know. I heard about the march too. Where have you been? Papa asked. You'll never believe this story. Tell me. His father answered, Henry Alden is here with the missionaries. Hmm, I didn't know the boy was religious. 
Mama said as she continued to sew. He's coming along on the journey to help. That's where Emmy got the new blankets. Papa didn't respond. I don't trust him one bit, Deuce Deuce said. Neither Papa nor Mama contradicted him. Who could they trust? As Captain Alden warned them, by sunrise, the soldiers woke everyone with a bugle call. The officers shouted toward the families, dismantle your tents, gather your gear, line up. Chaos. Families strapped their belongings on their backs as best they could. Sleeping blankets also served as cloaks. Dustu, walk with me. Amy whispered to him. Dustu nodded quickly. He didn't want to draw any attention to himself. The long light of people moved slowly from the fort. From where Dustu and Amy were, the procession looked like it was a mile long. Tired and weak, old folks and children soon lagged behind, only to be shouted at by the soldiers. After five hours of walking, Emmy broke her silence. Deuce to run away with me, she suggested. What? And go where? I heard there are Cherokee hiding in the mountains. They won't migrate. If we run away today and travel northeast, we'll get to them and be safe. How do you know this? I delivered fresh water to Chief John Ross's tent yesterday. He and two elders were talking about them. But it's top secret. Do not let the soldiers hear. What about Mama and Papa? Deuce couldn't imagine leaving them behind. I already asked Papa. He said to go. We are young and need to save ourselves. Are you kidding me? No, I wouldn't kid about something like this. Emmy reached under the blanket that she was carrying. Her eyes scanned the area, making sure no soldier was watching. She pulled a patchwork satchel from under a blanket. What's in it? Deuce asked. Papa and Mama made supplies for us from scraps they found in the barracks. Bandages, socks, handkerchiefs. They told me that the supplies were for our journey. They are, Amy answered with a twinkle in her eye. The missionaries will help Mama and Papa on their journey, but we'll have to fend for ourselves. This is crazy, Deustu said. If we run away, we'll never see Mama or Papa again. Deustu, I know that, and they know that. Then why run? If we have any hope of keeping our tribe alive, we young people have got to escape. Deustu didn't like the idea of leaving his parents, but Emmy made a good point. They must think about the survival of the tribe. Soldiers rode by on horseback. Emmy stashed her satchel under her blanket. They stopped talking. When the soldiers had safely passed and moved to the front of the line, Emmy continued with her plan. At nightfall, when camp had been set, we'll sneak away. That's your plan? Mm-hmm, that's it. The darkness will hide us. We'll get lost. We don't know these woods. We're not going to walk all night. We'll just head northeast for an hour or two until we're clear of the soldier's path. Then we can rest until daybreak. It really doesn't seem that complicated, Deuce Dude thought. He and his sister were both fast. Let's do it, Deuce Dude decided. Wait for Papa's signal tonight. How will I know? Papa will start a coughing fit to get attention drawn to him. Then we'll creep away. Shouldn't we take others with us? Not tonight. Chief John Ross has connections in Chattanooga. They'll help others when they get there. For the rest of the day, the families walked over rough trails carved into the Georgia hills. The men and women could stop, the women and children could stop and rest for short bits of time. If they stopped too long, they risked falling behind. Those at the end of the line were constantly prodded by soldiers with bayonets. Deustu saw Henry two or three times during the day. Henry's duty was to dispense water. He rode in the mule-driven wagon and hopped off to pour water from a pitcher into the mouths of thirsty walkers. Deustu didn't breathe a word of Emmy's plan to anyone, but he knew that Mama and Papa knew. Most of all, he knew that they approved of the plan. They must do something to keep the tribe alive. By nightfall, everyone struggled to reach camp. Many, too tired to even pitch their tents, simply dropped to the cold mountain earth. Eat, Indians, Captain Alder ordered the families. Henry and Pastor Smith were atop the wagon, mixing warm water into porridge. Another missionary, Pastor Jones, scooped the porridge into small wooden bowls and handed them to anyone who approached the food wagon. They're too tired to get up and get their supper, Emmy said to Dustu. We must eat. Eat all that they give you, Dustu said as he winked at Emmy. They walked up to the food wagon. When they approached, Henry saw them. Pastor Jones, let me serve for a time, Henry said. He stepped forward, took the ladle and bowls from Pastor Jones. Friends, have your supper, Henry said to Dustu and Emmy. Henry filled their bowls to the brim with porridge. Then he reached in a small trunk. He carefully took out two handfuls of dried beef and two loaves of crusty bread. 
for your journey, Henry whispered. Emmy nodded, took the extra food, and hid it in her apron pockets. She walked back to where her parents had set up their tent. It was conveniently located near the nearest to the trees. Does Henry know? Deuce to ask angrily. Emmy didn't reply. She smiled. He's not to be trusted, Emmy. His father is the captain. Papa said we have nothing to lose. The family ate their dinner in silence. Mama broke the silence when she quietly told the children, you know I love you both. More than life, she squeezed their hands. Papa began coughing hysterically. He sounded as if, if he were dying. Emmy tugged Dustu's arm. Get up, walk away. Papa, Papa's coughing got louder. The soldiers took notice. The other families took notice. They hustled over to check on Papa. Papa doubled over and beat his chest. Mama had her arms around him. Emmy and Dustu slipped into the shadowy woods. Dustu turned to see his parents one last time, but he couldn't see them at all. People were crowding around them. Let's go. While they're distracted, we need to get distance between us. They scrambled up the hillside, moving deeper and deeper into the woods. And now it's your turn. What do you think is going to happen to Emmy and Dustu? Do you think they made the right decision leaving their family? What do you think? Well, we will find out in the next chapter.